The World Food Programme reports crop failure in Ethiopia has plunged 7.2 million people into acute hunger and killed more than a million livestock. In neighboring Kenya, where escalating drought has left more than 3 million people short of food, including half a million who are facing emergency levels of hunger. And in Somalia, the WFP says 6 million people of 40% of the population are food insecure, with more than 80,000 on the brink of famine. An estimated 20 million people in drought-affected parts of Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia may face catastrophic levels of hunger if the region does not get enough rain. Today on Our Voices, we will take a look at how nations in the Horn are on the brink of famine after several years of drought. We will also look at the limitations and challenges that international humanitarian groups have to respond to the crisis. Hello, I am Simbanyu Shekoya and this is our voices. The persistent drought in the Horn of Africa is a reflection of severe weather intensified by climate change. For Ethiopia's pastoralists who have seen more than a million livestock perish, it's a signal their way of life cannot be sustained by the next generation. Linda Giftash reports from Gode, Ethiopia. It's become an all too familiar sight in Ethiopia. Despite a last-ditch effort to feed her cattle with grass from her thatch roof, Addis Ahmed Omar says they all perished. Her family is now among the 7.2 million Ethiopians who are not getting enough to eat, according to the United Nations. When I was young, drought came, and we coped and survived with it. But this current drought is continuous and recurrent. It's more than we can manage. These events aren't just lasting longer, they're becoming more frequent. Some of the former pastoralists at this displacement camp lost their livestock in 2017. They've become permanent residents of the area, having abandoned their nomadic lifestyle to instead rear small animals like goats and grow produce. It is better to look for other livelihoods rather than pastoralism. Education and other livelihoods like farming. Mixed farming is another option. Climate change is projected to bring even more extreme conditions in the years to come with contrasting droughts and floods. That will also contribute to soil erosion and degradation, shrinking the available land for pasture. Within this year, experts say there's a 61 percent chance the region's next rainy season will fail, devastating even more pastoralists. It is very challenging for them to continue the same um, way of life depending on just natural resources. So the future is not, is not bright, unfortunately, to say. But that's where they need to adapt to the, to the new uh, climate condition. In the northern Afar region, pastoralists say they shouldn't have to abandon their tradition. Instead, they want more support from government for protecting grazing land and to develop programs to provide emergency feed and medication for livestock. Afar have this wealth of traditional knowledge, this wealth of what to do, when it's too dry, there's no water. There's wealth of how to look after their herd. But politics doesn't allow them. At a clinic 100 kilometers from Afar's capital of Samara, Biru Ali, a pastoralist mother, is not as optimistic. Surviving on just bread and rations of water trucked in by aid groups, she says her two-year-old is now sick with diarrhea. I don't want my daughter to do the same, education. While many say they would welcome an alternative future for their children, now faced with hunger, their focus is on simply surviving today. Linda Giftash for VOA News, Godet, Ethiopia. The record drought in the Horn of Africa has wiped out crops, millions of cattle, and left millions of people who depend on them facing hunger. In Ethiopia's Oromia region, some herders have been forced to eat roots they would normally feed to their cattle. Henry Winkins reports from East Bali, Ethiopia. 
At this makeshift camp in Gabbana, herders are digging for roots that in normal times they would feed to their cattle. But the Horn of Africa's worst drought in decades killed their cattle weeks ago, and now there's nothing else to eat. The East Barley zone of Ethiopia, where Gabbana is located, is at a crisis point. So far this year, we haven't received any food, either from the government or other organizations. It's fallen to locals in the surrounding areas to help us. They even gave us the clothes we wear. Until last year, Gabbana residents say they were reliant on government handouts after conflict six years ago forced them from their farmland. They've been living in this makeshift camp ever since. The record drought has made many of the residents too weak with hunger to leave their tents. I'm sick from hunger and lying in bed all day. I don't have enough to eat or drink. A local aid worker says they're under-resourced and can offer little support. Equipment they were provided with six years ago, like plastic sheets for shelter, have already fallen apart. The government has ignored them. They want to go back to being self-reliant, but for now they need food. At a local hospital, one of the doctors says admissions for malnourished infants has nearly doubled compared to last year. It's a minimal support with... Uh... Uh, governmental and non-governmental cases, but it is a minimal, less rather than, than that last year's. Uh, so uh, it's too difficult uh, to manage our uh, patients. VOA spoke with the father of a child receiving treatment. I came here because my daughter is getting sick. I don't have any food to give her because I didn't receive any aid from the government or other institutions. Ethiopia's National Disaster Risk Management Commission did not immediately respond to a request for comment. As for the residents at Gabbana camp, it appears they can only hope that help will arrive soon. Henry Wilkins for VOA News, East Bale, Ethiopia. Residents in Ethiopia's northern Afar region are being forced to use dirty river water. Officials and aid groups can only provide water trucks when possible, leaving locals with few options. Halima Atumani reports from Afar region, Ethiopia. The dirty stream stems from Ethiopia's Awash River, a lifeline for locals and their main water source for bathing, washing, cooking and drinking. Ethiopia is reeling from the worst drought to hit the Horn of Africa in 40 years and the northern Afar region is no exception. Clean water is a luxury they cannot afford, says Semera resident Aisha Ali. My children suffer from skin diseases and are always ill because the water we use is not clean. Some children even die because of this unsafe water. Khadija Hamida lives next to the river and says her children also suffer illnesses and disease because of the dirty water. This is the only choice we have. All our children and families use this water. But it's not just villagers struggling with a lack of clean water. Dufti Hospital, the only functional hospital in Afar, is overwhelmed with patients. Acting head Dr. Yusuf Muhammad says they are also suffering from the water shortage. Sometimes we may not get the water. Sometimes some oppression, op elective cases are uh, stopped or postponed due to lack of water. So surgical, case, uh, surgical site infections are there because there is uh, no adequate water. Uh, Attendants of the patients, some patients, they are using running water. There is a nearby river. They are using river water, which is not safe, it is not clean. The Afar region's water bureau says it is struggling to address the water shortage. We have dug many boreholes, but we couldn't utilize them because of a shortage of fluoride. 
The fluoride level was below the WHO standard, and we were forced to close the wells. The cost of filtering the water is high and beyond the capacity of our office. Relief comes when clean water is tracked in by aid groups and the regional government. Previously, we would buy water and carry it from the city center. One jerry can costs about 40 cents. It was expensive and tiring, but now we get clean water, so this is good for us. But the relief is only temporary as the truck quickly runs dry and people have to wait for the next one or are forced to risk using water from the river. Halima Mani. For VA News, Samara, Ethiopia. It's time for a break. When we return, we will take an in-depth look at thousands of Somalis who are at risk of starving today. We'll be right back. On VOA Our Voices, women are using their voices to empower, to nurture, to educate, to stand up in any language. Amajgriyachu, Dims Action. Mario Yemu. Mazwi Edu. Our Voices. Welcome back. You are watching Our Voices. The drought devastating the Horn of Africa has hit Somalia the hardest, with an estimated 8 million people facing crisis level food insecurity. Aid groups say hundreds of thousands of Somalis are at risk of starving today, as reports emerge of children dying of malnutrition. Mohammed Sheikh Noor reports from Mogadishu. This stabilization center for malnourished children in Somalia is run by an NGO, Action Against Hunger. It serves mostly poor women living in IDP camps on the outskirts of Mogadishu. Fadumu Made left Gov Gadud village, a rural settlement in the southern Somali Bay region after three of her young children died of malnutrition. She now lives in an IDP campus with three of her remaining children. Before the drought, we had livestock and farms that grew crops, but the drought destroyed them all at once. I had three children who died from malnutrition, and the child on my lap is suffering severe malnutrition because of the ongoing hunger crisis. The larger number of displaced women with malnourished children, mostly under the age of five, is overwhelming for hospitalists. Families escaping the ravages of drought from all regions of Somalia see Mogadishu as their only hope. Asha Aden is from Sako town in middle Juba. We cannot grow crops and our livestock have died. The situation of our children as well as our lives are in dire danger. May God be with us. Doctors say there is a risk of malnutrition that can cause more deaths if it is not addressed soon enough. Dr. Abdirisaq Yusuf works and supervises the malnutrition ward at the Martino Hospital, where he is also a director. He says there is a shortage of nutritional foods for children. They must be given a therapeutic diet such as milk with nutritional value for the vital strength required for malnourished children. The supplies that were donated to us by the United Nations are depleted now. Meanwhile, at an IDP camp just outside Mogadishu, Women and their young children wait outside their makeshift shelters for help. And the campus caretaker says families in desperate need of help arrive daily. On a single day, 10 bands with displaced people can arrive. The next day, four. Other days, we have no new arrivals. Every day has its own challenges. There is always something different. You can see families being dropped by vehicles all day, and they walk to this camp. That is the reality here. 80s groups say the Somali government lacks the capacity to mitigate the severe drought and malnutrition crisis. And without more help, the situation will grow even more grim for children. Mohamed Shaknoor for VOA News, Mogadishu. Oxfam International reports that one person is likely dying from hunger every 48 seconds in drought-ravaged East Africa. 
Now for more insight on the dire situation, my Our Voice colleagues Amina, Orian and Ndimiake joined me to speak to Idrus Dar, Executive Director at WASDA, a Somali aid group that works along with Oxfam International in the region. He's calling for more support for hundreds of thousands suffering of extreme food insecurity in Somalia and says if nothing is done soon, those his organization serve are on the brink of days. What we used to see is that uh, droughts used to come once in every 10 years, in every eight years, in every five years for one season, and then we will recover. But this one is different from last because it's three years continuous drought, continuous failure of rain for four seasons. And the bad thing is that the fourth one, which is uh, coming to come in October, November, December, is projected to be below average again. So what made people so vulnerable and the need so huge is because there was no break in three years for people. That now was compounded by the impact of, of Corona, then the locust uh, investor in, in, in the Horn of Africa, and now the rising prices of food stuff and fuel across the world for so many reasons, including the Ukraine war. So this is what made uh, this drought different from others. And then the number of people who are in need across the region are so, so huge that it had never happened before. Mm. That's very detrimental and it's, it's very worrisome. I mean, we know about 90% of Somali is in severe drought. And as you've noted, three years consecutively is, is a long time. And that happened in a place where, in a country where the government has not had a, a chance to also breathe in terms of political stability, knowing the El Shabaab attacks and so forth, also makes it very hard for humanitarian assistance to come into certain regions and the country at large. Where does it leave the population? Do, is there a fear that this could turn into a serious famine throughout the country. In previous situations, when there's drought in one country, another country will be better and people will move their animals and get the animals saved and come back when their country is better. But now there's nowhere to move. People have lost their livestock and people are now being displaced. If people will get help in where they have lost their, their livestock, until they're able to recover, then people will not move to IDP camps. But because humanitarian uh, support is not getting to really rural areas where livestock uh, owners live, where pastors live, it is now forced people to move to major areas, which has become major humanitarian hubs because they are accepted and humanitarian actors can get to those people. As you have indicated, there's been a loss of livestock and as a consequence, there's increased famine and hunger. It's estimated that one person is likely dying of hunger every 48 seconds in drought-ravaged Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia, according to estimates of Oxfam and Save the Children. And nearly half a million people across the parts of Somalia and Ethiopia are facing famine-like conditions. Usually women and children are most impacted by this. And we know that children are already dying in the Afar region. How bad is it for them at the moment? When such things happen, men move away with the remaining livestock or to go and migrate to other main, uh, major areas for wages, something to take back to the salary. So when you leave the old, the destitute, the disabled, the women and children behind, hungry, unprotected, with no nothing forthcoming that will help them. We have seen in 2011, families leaving their children behind as they walk, as move, families move from central Somalia to the refugee camps in Kenya. That long track, families were leaving behind children, mothers, old people, disabled who could not cope up with it, with, with the team in, 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 during the, that long track. And that's how we lost many people on the way, buried on the roadsides. Uh, on the track sites, families not looking back at those who are dying, but leaving them because they are too weak and trying to get the others to areas that uh, where help is in other areas. So that is why we are saying that it's appropriate time that we get to people where they are before they do the panic movement.
I have a question about the long-term solution to this. I mean, the situations you've presented are just so harrowing and so dire. Three years in a row, drought, which is among the worst span over the years, and climate change being at the center of it. What do you see as the long-term solutions? African governments need to be serious and invest in fast in agriculture. When droughts begin and, the, and the animals start moving and, the, and livestock diseases increase and crops fail, then what expected now is uh, for us to have anticipatory funding so to prevent people falling further into destitute, into vulnerability. So there's no anticipatory funding in place. There are so many challenges around the world, like COVID. Uh, there is also the Ukraine war, which are making the humanitarian aid, the funding run thin. So it's enough coming to the Horn of Africa in terms of humanitarian aid. The humanitarian uh, response plan for Somalia is only 30% funded. 70% of the needs of those 7.5 million people that are in need in Somalia right now are not helping. Perhaps our aim should be to save every human life and not part of the population. If it continues the way it is right now, if there isn't enough it's sufficient funding from, from, from the international actors, then uh, we'll see farming and we'll see mass deaths. Our thanks to Idru Star of Wazda. Now it's time for another break, but first, what more can be done to assist people in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia who are in dire need of food and humanitarian aid due to the effects of severe drought. Please share your thoughts on our social media platforms. We are on Facebook at VOA Africa and Instagram and Twitter at VOA Our Voices. We are also on WhatsApp and our number is on your screen. When we return, we will introduce you to an organization who are helping women and girls in drought-stricken areas of Kenya to take fewer steps to get clean water and protect their safety. That's coming up on our Women to Watch segment. Stay with us. Empowerment and humanity towards a better world. Economic and social progress of every society. Facts and information from key players rather than spectators in politics, business, science and technology. City, rural, educated, all underprivileged. We care and we listen to what matters to you. Your, Your voices, voices are our voices. Welcome back to Our Voices. It's time for our Women Torch segment, where we bring you phenomenal women who are doing extraordinary things, especially during the worst drought crisis in 40 years. Recurred drought in the Horn of Africa has mostly affected rural women and girls who must walk up to tens of kilometers to retrieve clean water, putting their safety at risk. Today, we introduce you to the US-based charity group, Water is Life Kenya. They are drilling wells for villages and schools to provide water closer to home. Juma Majinga reports from Oliopos, Kenya. In Olepolo's village on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, women and girls sing to celebrate the gift of water. Water is a basic right guaranteed to citizens under the Kenyan constitution. Access to clean water, however, remains a challenge for remote communities. We used to walk several kilometers across the border to fetch water in Tanzania. Sometimes we would get harassed by the people there because of our being in a foreign country. We would be told to collect and carry donkey dung in our shukas. It was just pure harassment. Poverty levels were very high because our livestock used to die from lack of water. There could be grass, but without water, livestock can't survive. Frequent prolonged drought from climate change has exacerbated the water problem in arid and semi-arid areas. Women and girls have been affected the most by the situation. Water is Life Kenya, a US-based charity, is helping women and girls gain access to clean water by drilling wells and boreholes and harvesting rainwater 
therefore reducing the distances they need to travel. Spending their whole day um, fetching water, um, it prevented a lot of girls from going to school. You'll find a lot, most of the adult women in this community haven't been to school at all. And um, so we really, really wanted to, you know, target a project that would help them be able to transform their life. Residents say the water project has made a big difference. To be honest, our lives have really changed for the better. Now our kids are going to school. Now it feels like paradise. There is no problem. You fetch water, do your laundry. The kids are clean for school. You have more time. We are in a much better place and we are happy for that. With 25 such water projects completed in different villages in Kajiadu County and benefiting more than 100,000 residents, Water is Life Kenya co-founder Joyce Tanyan says the work has been rewarding. That essential barrier can be removed, water's there. Now people can develop. That's, that's to me a dream and, uh, you know, it's, that's the best thing in life, actually. To see that fruit happening, those fruits growing, people developing themselves, it's, that's a miracle. The saying, water is life, has never had a greater meaning for residents of Olepolus. As women and girls of the village sing in celebration, many people in other remote arid areas of Kenya still need water. Juma Mujanga for VA News, Olepolus, Kenya. Indeed, water is life. Do you know of a woman or an organization addressing the drought crisis in the home? If you do, please let us know and share your comments on our social media platforms using the hashtag VOA Our Voices. That's our show for this week and for the latest Horn of Africa drought news, visit our website voaafrica.com. On behalf of the Voice of America and my Our Voices colleagues, I am Semenyu Sheboye. Thanks for watching.